Okay, leave you in the hands of Mike Mullins. Microphone operational. I just plug in situation here. Uh, I don't, well, you know, I guess I'll sit. Neil sat, so I'm gonna. I think it's not. Oh, it feels just right. Mm -hmm. Oops. that okay yeah. all right this is uh, yeah this guitar doesn't it's it's pretty old so it doesn't have any electronics or anything so I just usually rely on a good microphone and uh, well, my name is Mike I was yeah, I had my first uh, international guitar camp experience last spring uh, in April it seems like it was just yesterday uh, just doesn't seem like any time has passed at all it's uh, but uh, it was, all I remember is it was pretty cold up here, but much nicer now. So I'm gonna be showing, uh, teaching, instructing, uh, uh, what we call flat picking, which is kind of a generic term for bluegrass guitar, generally refers to when you play melodies or fiddle tunes on the guitar. It's kind of not all that disparate from any other style where you use a pick, uh, but but mostly uh, the main difference is that most of the picks we use from flat picking bluegrass guitar, rather this, of the stiff poker chip variety. Um, and that reason for that is, you know, you just get, you get a little more push on the string and get, you know, a better tone, a little more volume and it's uh, a little easier to control when you don't have a pick that's bending all over the place. Although, you know, it's, it's kind of open to interpretation for uh, what's comfortable and what, what kind of what works for you. But, uh, um, let's see, well I do here, well this tune has some flat picking and bluegrass type rhythm in it. And it's also in, So in drop D. My 81-year-old guitar is not behaving, but there we go. This is, a, this is actually a song. It's got a, a fiddle tune cleverly hidden inside it. Um, <clears throat> it called, uh, one of my favorite fiddle tunes called uh, The St. Anne's Reel. And I like this tune because it's, a lot of fiddle tunes are just uh, three chords and you can kind of see the changes coming a mile away. This one has a really interesting contour to the melody and the chord changes are, I think, are really beautiful. Uh, and uh, I think it's originally a French-Canadian tune, but it's kind of been assimilated throughout the bluegrass community, and I've even, I've even played it at sessions in Ireland, so it's, it's pretty, don't know who wrote it, but it's a, it, anyway, this is a song that was written around the basis of this fiddle tune. It's called The Ballad of St. Anne's Reel, and, and uh, a lot of the stuff I am do on guitar will be demonstrated in here. He was stranded in a tiny town on Fair Prince Edward Isle, waiting for a ship to come and find him. One horse place, a friend face, some coffee and a tiny trace, a fiddle in the distance far behind him. Time across the counter then, a shy hello and a brand new friend, I walk along the streets in the wintry weather. Yellow light, an open door, and a welcome friend. This room for more. 
And they're standing there inside together He said, I've heard that tune before somewhere Though I can't remember when Was it on some other friendly shore? Did I hear it on the wind? Was it written in the sky above? I think I heard it from someone I love But I've never heard sounds so sweet since then says I'll take your hand and he's caught up in the magic of her smile leap the heart inside him when and off across the floor he sent his clumsy body graceful as a child he said there's magic in the fiddlers on there's magic in this town there's magic in the dancers feet and the way they put him down people smiling everywhere boots and ribbons locks of hair Laughter, old blue suits and Easter gowns Sitting there, someone's hat slipped hanging on the rack. The empty chairs, the wooden floor, the feels the touch of shoes no more. Waiting for the dancers to come back. And the fiddles in the closet of some daughter of the town. Springs are broke, the bow is gone, and the cover's buttoned down. But sometimes on December nights, when the air is cold and the wind is right, there's a melody that passes through the town. So it was the Ballad of St. Anne's Reel, and it's got the, 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 the fiddle tune St. Anne's Reel in it, which is in the key of D. And um, some players capo up and play it in C position. Um, I, I, like to, I like to do it in the actual, the open position, you know, and the melody is kind of... do with it is I, I, I play a lot of uh, like notes that connect the melody together and it kind of forms this, this train of notes but the melody is still there but it, you've got these all these, well, I don't know what you call them, grace notes or just notes that sort of are the arpeggiated patterns that kind of uh, accentuate the melody and kind of support it. Um, so it'd be like, this is kind of like instead of So I go. Oops, I, I, did, I forgot I tuned out of D, drop D, so, because <laughs> I was going to move on, but I just thought I'd demonstrate a little of it. In case you haven't heard the tune St. Anne's Reel before, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a, and...
but I, I kind of add some of these cross-picking things to it to just kind of, not so much to dress it up or make it show offy, but I just think it sounds, I just think it sounds neat to have, uh, you know. <laughs> Anyway, that's 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 one uh, version of flat picking. Uh, another fiddle tune I like to play, at least on the guitar, uh, is one that I think everyone's heard. It's called the Arkansas Traveler. You know, it kind of goes like this. It's the bringing home a baby bumblebee song. basically it. Um, and the thing about flat picking, there's, I don't want to get too technical or in the weeds right now. I'm just, I'm, uh, I guess I'm supposed to be doing more tunes, but I was kind of taking a cue from Neil. I noticed how interesting it was for me to have him kind of explain his process and, uh, and how he comes up with arrangements and, and break down techniques a little bit while, pl you know, playing a few tunes. Well, this one, I'm just going to play a little of it because this is actually one of your more kind of boring fiddle tunes, although I have fun playing it. It's probably more fun to play than it is to listen to. But um, one of my favorite guitar players, uh, flat pickers, is a uh, man named Norman Blake. And uh, he li he's from Sulphur Springs, Georgia. He's sort of retired now. He's about 86. And, uh, but I, used, I saw him play many years ago, like 1976, he came to Santa Barbara. I just moved to Santa Barbara and he, and I already knew about Norman. I'd had a couple of his records that would really inspire me to start flat picking. And, but seeing him play live is just a real revelation for me. Um, he was kind of like, you know, to my Norman Blake's kind of like to what John Renborn was to Neil, you know, just a real wow, you know, <laughs> uh, aha moment. Well, this is, uh, this is kind of like uh, a version of Arkansas Traveler where instead of just playing a bunch of single notes, I'm trying to keep some sort of a loping melody or backup going. So, so it'd be kind of like this. Just a basic strum like that. It's a, kind of a bluegrass rhythm. Like there's a simple bluegrass rhythm. It's, And then it's kind of a double strum type one. And the bass alternates like that. So this is what the tune kind of sound like played in this uh, style. And 
And that, that, pat, that way I played that is it, this particular tune, it sounds really good down low, so you can keep that kind of bass going. So everything I'm playing is like below the fifth fret, pretty much. So it's, it's, it's uh, accessible. Oh, I thought you were giving me a, a hook. The gong. Yeah. Yeah, the bay part, mostly. Big difference between a lot of flat picking and finger picking. When I'm finger picking a melody, I use the bass notes to tell so you hear with the chord and put the melody up high. So yeah, that's one that that's one that's that's the one stuck in my head. Yeah. 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 Y
but I've, I did a whole project of solo arrangements for mandolins of just tunes that I really liked, similar to how Neil approaches it. Uh, this is a tune, I'm gonna demonstrate some hybrid picking here. It's, it's sort of my fake slack key tune. It's uh, a tune I wrote some years ago called Morning Star. And uh, it sort of got a, it just kind of came out sounding kind of Hawaiian. And uh, so I'll play a little of that for you. And it's, it's hybrid style. And I'm using this partial capo, which kind of puts me in a, a quasi open tuning.
So there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This capo, it uh, it's a partial capo, so you can use it a number of different ways. This is different ways. This is the only way I use it. It 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 only uh, capos the the A, D, and G string. So you have the. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, you can buy these. This is a shub. Wow. No, you can buy these on Amazon or anywhere. <clears throat> you know, it, um, a lot of music stores will have them. Someone gave me this capo about 20 years ago, and I thought it was really cool. So I, I use it sometimes, you know. And uh, anyway. That would be a really good thing to go into in depth tomorrow, like your breakout session. Yeah, I, I did, yeah, I did do one last time on, on the partial cable, just to give people ideas yeah. and stuff they can do, because it really sounds neat to me. Instead of just, and the thing, cool thing about it is you can play a lot of regular chords. But, but you know, instead of playing like, I walked out in the streets of the radio, you could go, I walked out in the streets of Laredo As I walked out in Laredo one day Yeah, it just gives a really cool, nice uh, sound to it. It just kind of opens up the whole register and it's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's, it's something you can just slap on and play a lot of the same chords you already know, but then when you play the DLR You kind of, it's so, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah, it's probably, that's that probably kind of close to the tuning she used, except she retunes her guitar all over the place. Didn't you ordain to use a partial capo and a full capo at the same time? Yes, you can do that. So if you wanted to play, say, this is the key of E. If you wanted to play an F in this, you'd have to put a full capo on the first fret and and move this up to the third fret. And uh, yeah, I think so. And and I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way to use three capos. You know. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, you know, I am not sure what else. I, do I have time to play a little something on mandolin before I? I, I, but well, if not, I can, I can, I know, I'm, I know we're kind of trying to keep a clock yeah. here, so. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll do a really, I'll do a really, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, excuse me, I'll, uh, this is an F5 mandolin, this is kind of the shape that's been around for about a hundred years, and this is primarily the style of mandolin that most, uh, <laughs> Most mandolin players are using these days. These are the teardrop shape with the F holes. So, and they're a little harder to keep in tune than a guitar, but also these strings have been done to death at a camp I was at two weeks ago, and I didn't get around to changing them. So. I'll play something really, I won't even play the whole version I have of it, but just to give you an idea of solo arrangements of tunes that I just like to play. This is a tune that will be pretty familiar to you, I think, um, and it kind of makes a neat mandolin instrumental arrangement and, uh, by one of the fathers of bluegrass, uh, Eric Clapton. So, <laughs> so he, 